Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here, and today we have an awesome event for you guys. We have a special BlizzCon Challenge Stone tournament. And if you guys are unfamiliar with Challenge Stone, we can quickly go over what's going on. So we wanted to uh, showcase a tournament where uh, we highlight the deck building capabilities of all our participants. And each Challenge Stone will be given a very interesting challenge that tests their ability to be innovative and in the end, defeat their opponents with their creative decks. This Challenge Stone in our special BlizzCon edition, we have the Raid Bosses. Players will have to make three decks. They will be given 25 minutes to do so and they'll play conquest mode and the first rule is each deck must include at least 10 World of Warcraft raid boss cards in each of the three decks and these are really wild really crazy cards you often don't see in Hearthstone, so it should be some pretty interesting gameplay. And the second rule is, of course, that the big game hunter cannot be used in any of the decks to kind of keep up positive spirits so nobody is punished for playing the bigger minions that they may have to play with this specific challenge. Stick with us, guys. It should be a great tournament. Couldn't have said it better myself. And of course, here to help me on this challenge stone journey, I have Raynad and Robert. So what do you guys think about the challenge? Should be pretty fun? Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to see some of these raid bosses that I haven't seen since like 2007, I feel like. <laughs> Uh, Illidan doesn't see a lot of play in Hearthstone. Sadly, no, so. no. Well, no it'll sadly. be nice to see him. No, it's such a good card. You know, he's 7-5, makes a bunch of flames. Mm. Very yeah. exciting stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, the idea behind Challenge Stone is not only do we want to highlight the deck building capabilities of our players, but we really want to uh, highlight cards that really aren't seen very frequently in Hearthstone, like Illidan as the one that we mentioned, as, uh, you know, there's just so many cool mechanics, there's so many cool interactions that often just don't work synergistically, or in some cases just don't work. But uh, it's really fun to push that in, uh, in what people have to play with. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as somebody who doesn't play a lot of World of Warcraft, Crip, uh, what are the, the raid bosses? Oh, well, let's take a look at that. Uh, these are the 19. We have Baron Geddon from Molten Core. A few of the old World of Warcraft players may have challenged some of these. Chromagus, Deathwing, Aedas, Darkbane, Fugan, Fiola Lightbane, Gormok, the Impaler, Gruul, Ice Howl, of course, Illidan. Keltuzad, Lotheb, Maexna, Major Demo Executus, Malagos, Nefarian, Anixia, Ragnaros, and Stalag. And you know, the, the, some of these are pretty good cards, but uh, I don't think anyone has realistically made a deck with 10 of them in their deck before. Yeah, it's going to be some crazy, crazy decks for sure. A lot of high curves, I imagine. It'll be pretty exciting. Yeah, uh, I mean, if, if you had to take on this challenge, Robert, because, I mean, you were pretty close to having to take on the challenge. You are one of the casters. You were, you were just on the line. You know, you didn't quite have to compete. But if you did, what do you think you would have uh, came up with first? Uh, I think I probably would have made Face Hunter with, uh, with 10 raid bosses. Okay. Yeah. Face Hunter. Well, that, that is basically uh, all, all you really want to play, I suppose. Yeah. All right, well, uh, uh, let's get... Let's get talking about the deck building process. Uh, but first, let's see the competitors and let's see if they have any words for one another with Rachel on the stage. Thanks, Crip. Please join me in welcoming our first Challenge Stone contestant to the stage. It's Amaz. And challenging him for the title of best known priest, we have the man with two names, Brian, Brian Kibler, Kibler. All right, guys, come on down. Join me in the center of the stage. Brian, great shirt. All right, guys. I know there's a lot on the line here, and I just want to give you an opportunity, Brian, first, to say something to your opponent, Amaz, here. I mean, uh, as, uh, you know, Garash would say, I will crush you. All right, Amaz, those are strong words from Brian. Tell me, what do you want to say to him? I mean, strategy-wise, we know Brian Kibler is a big fan of dragons, so he's pretty predictable, so he's just going to lose. I got him figured out. You guys are so mean to each other, but this is a, this is a game that, that Everything is up in the air. 
You have 10 raid bosses in your deck each, and uh, I want to know, how tough was this challenge compared to other challenge stones, compared to other tournaments that you've played in, Amaz? Well, um, it's definitely quite interesting that uh, we only have 20 cards to select from, and um, since you all have these, you know, high-cost cards, you want some support cards, right? So, um, you know, I went with the, my gut feeling, and hopefully I can take it all. Well, Amaz sure thinks he knows a lot about you and your dragon strategy, but I want to know, Brian, is there anything that you know about Amaz that's going to help you win this one? I mean, all, all I know is that you know, I have experience in Challenge Stone. I won the very first Challenge Stone event. I don't even th think you played in one, right? So I, you're, you're, you're the, the noob here, so. Harsh, you guys, I can't wait to see this settled in the box. So please shake hands. Get out of here. I'm going to give this back to the casters at the desk, and let's see this rumble go down. Well, that really was some serious trash talk going down in that interview. But, uh, you know, some, some facts were out there. I mean, Kibler did, in fact, win the challenge that he has participated in, too, as the winner gets to return. And, uh, you know, the, the, the ability to form a deck out of you know, the crazy stuff that goes in your mind, um, you know, is, is something that people often don't even experience when they play the game of Hearthstone. But, uh, you know, Reyna, at someone like you, you, you kind of push for this idea when you play ranked, even. You try to be as innovative as you can. Um, do, do, you, do you see that maybe some personality traits? Or are there are people who constantly do this? Because it feels like Kibler or maybe one of those people. I think it's just those of us with short attention spans, Crip. You know, oh, okay. we get we get bored after playing the same deck for a few games. Want to mix it up a little, do something unique. Um, but but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons to deck build. Personally, for me, I, I think it's like the most fun aspect of the game, and it definitely uh, uses a different skill set than just learning kind of the the muscle memory behind playing the same deck often. Yeah. I uh, very much have to agree with you there. Kibler is obviously very good at uh, deck building in general. We see him tinker a lot on stream. And I think, uh, again, obviously this particular challenge requires players to use 10 different raid bosses from the World of Warcraft. And uh, I think Kibler has definitely got the skills to be the favorite in this one. Although, uh, you know, Amaz, he does make some interesting deck choices we saw in round of 40. Uh, not really sure I agreed with all of them, but clearly he was experimenting, and that could come in handy in this challenge. All right, well, now the guys are in the booth with their headsets on. We can go over the draft they did last week. Again, normally when we do Challenge Stone, the players have a certain amount of time, and usually that amount of time is uh, reasonable. In this case, they had 25 minutes. So uh, we, can see, we can see them drafting here. They did it earlier this week because while it's fun to watch uh, deck building, it's even more fun to watch deck building when it happens really fast because uh, things actually happen at a steady rate here. So we can see uh, as, as the timer goes down at a little bit accelerated rate, uh, it seems like Brian Kibler and Amaz are, are doing a, a little bit of panicking. Now, there are a few aspects that I have seen, you know, hosting quite a few Challenge Zone tournaments. One aspect, we see a lot of players take their time to thoroughly go through all the cards, all the options, before they even put a card down. In fact, we've seen some players take more than half of the time allowed to just look through their options before they even put a card in any deck. But it seems like both the players here, uh, particularly Brian Kibler, have this strategy already in their mind and are just putting cards on the deck. So what, what would you do if you were part of this, Raynad? I mean, a, a lot of it is about making the best decisions in that time frame. So I definitely respect just going in and building a deck right away, maybe looking for things to fill it out at the end. Really, the cards that stand out to you in your mind, you're going to have like most of a deck kind of already in mind, I think. So it's fine to do it either way. But for those last few cards, you definitely want to flip through your collection as quickly as possible, see if there's something you might have missed that isn't a card that immediately comes to mind. Because, I mean, there are a lot of things in Challenge Zone that uh, basically like a lot of formats that force you to use cards or really encourage you to use cards that you just don't think about when you're building a standard rank deck. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to miss those if you don't look at the collection at some point. Well, we see Kibler here working, I believe, on his second deck, which is going to be Paladin. Uh, Amaz's first deck was, uh, was Druid. And I think, you know, because we talked about the challenge a little bit, you, you were favoring the Druid idea. Why, why is that? Well, I wanted to, uh, actually a bit of credit goes to, to Hyped for this idea, but uh, I wanted to go all in on Astral Communion, you know? I mean, when you're playing 10 raid bosses, you're going to have a lot of very expensive cards, you just have to. So I feel like, what if you just built a deck that had, let's say, 24 or 26 just minions that cost at least 8 mana? And, you well, know... Then, then you need that Astral Communion. Right. Well, I mean... You just mulligan for it aggressively, throw away the cards that aren't Astral Communion. If you draw it, then your deck is so powerful. Because a lot of these mm -hmm. players are playing with kind of strategies that are maybe like a little bit weaker than traditional rank deck uh, because of the rule set. So, I mean, I could definitely see that capitalizing on some slow starts. 
All right, well, we see a lot of thought going behind uh, some of these decks, just looking on Amaz's face there. Now, I asked you, Robert, you, you said Face Hunter. You, you, you just say Face Hunter, but um, right. to just any question, really, when it comes to Hearthstone. But really, if you had to pick a second deck and you couldn't pick Face Hunter a second time, what would you pick here for... Uh, you know, your go-to class. That's an important stipulation you just made, because obviously I was ready and waiting with the face hunter answer again, but I think I would actually go Priest. Uh, you know, we see the, the dark and light bane cards there, uh, three mana, really powerful synergy with buffs, and obviously with Priest you have Power mm -hmm. and Shield, you have Velen's Chosen, uh, even something like Inner Fire, uh, Divine Spirit, all those kind of cards are uh, really solid and kind of give you more of an early game than I think you're probably going to end up with. Obviously, a lot of these uh, legendary raid bosses have higher mana costs, which can make them a little bit unwieldy. So I think playing Priest, you can mitigate that a lot and still get a lot of the synergies from the buff. So I think uh, another uh, key aspect of Priest, though, is Wormrest Agent. I mean, when you think about large, expensive raid bosses, a lot of them do happen to be dragons, so why not just put in a dragon shell? I feel like that's kind of stage one for most of the players when they're thinking about, okay, what would be good in this format? They think about how to build their own dragon decks and how to beat opposing dragon decks. And that's another reason why Priest is a great fit. And another yeah. reason why Brian is just putting these decks together so quickly. He's like, dragon, 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 I'll fill yeah. out the rest of the cards later, autofill even. Uh, I just need to have yeah, it, it seems as if this, this challenge was made uh, I don't know favorably for Kibler. We'll have to see if he does well, but uh, I think it's certainly one that he's very welcome to try. Absolutely. Dragon so, decks all over the place. Yeah, we're, we're seeing Adis and uh, Fiola in almost every deck because, you know, when you are playing so many expensive cards, you want some early game minions, and those three mana cards are essentially spider tank uh, without the mech stipulation. So even if their abilities aren't working, those are great stats on a minion. It lets you fulfill that 10 raid boss stipulation without having to play too many expensive cards. That, that's definitely nice. Smooths out the curve. Amaz talked about how he, he knows that Killer's going to play a bunch of dragon decks. Well, he's right, but there, there are no, like, battle cry killer dragon or anything right. like that in the game. There's, there's literally nothing that deliberately targets the dragons right now. Uh, in fact, it's kind of the opposite. We see Rand, uh, Rand Blackhand in, I believe, every single one of Kibler's decks so far, knowing that he's, you know, he's got at least 10 targets. That's right. I would argue that the biggest reason to play dragon decks is Rand Blackhand, because when you're playing 10 raid bosses, I think Rand Blackhand becomes the best card in the game. I mean, the it best is, card in the game. I mean, I can't imagine a better one. It's a seven mana eight five that always kills a massive opponent or a massive minion on your opponent's side of the table, mm -hmm. and they're gonna play like ten of them or at least eight if they're playing the sisters. So, well, so. we see we see the players with the time almost running out, doing just kind of review on what they want to keep. You know, just going back. Usually, the first few cards you add to a deck. Um, they have different concepts behind the last few. You kind of learned a little bit from your experience. So it, the players have managed their time very well here as it's ending. Absolutely. I do have to ask, though, Crip, as a former World of Warcraft fanatic, uh, how many of these raid bosses were you a world first in beating? Um, that number is pretty low. In if fact, it's at I, least one, I'm impressed. Is it one? No, it's not. I, uh, think, right. I think the only two bosses, I mean, out of all the World of Warcraft world first that I have, um, none of them are Hearthstone cards yet. But maybe you guys can fix that one time soon. I'm, uh, I'm actually on that same boat. I think uh, it was a really small server, but I think my guild and I had a crazy cat lady was the uh, war or server first achievement. So not, uh, not quite world first, but yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Well, the players are very relaxed as their time is uh, running out. Uh, they're both even talking to each other, very, very happy. Uh, when it comes to the start of a Challenge Stone uh, deck building timed session, you never really know where you're going to end up. But, uh, you know, in the end, we saw, you know, the players really did very, very well. Now, uh, we talked about all the raid bosses in the deck, but, you know, we kind of went quickly through it. Maybe you guys didn't get to catch that. So let's take a quick look at the raid bosses and then uh, which, which one of those ended up making the lists of Kibler and Amaz. And those, those are all of them again. And then we see Amaz's raid bosses. Uh, he has a lot of the similar ones there. I think there's, there's 12? Oh, it's 13. So he has a lot of similar ones, as we talked about, the low casting cost ones, Adis, Fiola, the Fugan Stalag, all that is very popular. Um, I'm kind of surprised to see uh, no Deathwing from Amaz's side. You, know, you, you, you do discard a lot, but it seems like uh, a pretty nice way to uh, come back in the game, potentially. Yeah, Deathwing obviously uh, capable of very big swing turns uh, when you play him down, and I would almost imagine with no big game hunter available that it would feel like an auto-include, but uh, Amaz not feeling the same way. 
All right. Well, uh, let's check out Kibblers here. Uh, Kibblers, I think, had uh, more of a dragon approach. In fact, I believe there's only 10 boss cards selected, and this includes all three of his decks, which means there's zero variation of raid bosses across all three of Kibler's decks, which I guess should be no surprise, considering I believe he actually made five decks and chose to drop two at the end. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, no Malagos, but yeah, a lot of uh, just cards that fit well in a dragon deck. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. All right. Now, um, we're just about to get ready in the game, but what do you guys think? Now that we've seen the decks, now that you guys probably had some opinion of the players going into this, but, you know, with this type of format, you get a little bit better of an opinion because you know the tools that they have to use in the tournament. Tough to say. They're yeah. both obviously really uh, high-skilled players, but I like the fact that Kibler just identified his list of 10, where he's like, nope, these are, these are actually just the best, and I'm going to run them all across. It makes it seem like there's more method to the madness, so I got I to gotta say I'm voting for Kibler. Yeah, personally, right. I've got to give the edge to Kibler. I mean, this is he's already won a Challenge Stone. He's, he's very familiar with deck building. He's been doing it for well over a decade in Magic, and what a hand. Wow. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Three Dragon's is. the type of deck where if you have experience Three building Three it, then you know the strengths and the weaknesses, depending on the class, exactly the way that you want to build the deck, which support cards you want. So uh, I'm going to give him a bit of an edge, but it definitely is anyone's game. Ma's an excellent deck builder as well. So Yeah, Kibler has an excellent curve here with the North Shire into the Worm Rest into the Fiola. And I mean, even if you have to play a four mana 2-6, considering a lot of the cards you're potentially going to draw, again, are like a Maz's hand, eight mana. So it, it can be a little bit difficult. A Maz pushes with a Fugin, which is one of the best cards you can possibly have against Priest. But because we know that both these players are playing the fugin Stalag combo, often this can turn into a liability if uh, Kibler ends up being the only one drawing Stalag. Absolutely, but I mean, that is a turn two, four, seven minion against Priest. That is going to start cleaning up Kibler's board unless he decides two to... potential Divine Shields yeah. as well. Yeah, so he could play the Fiola and start or, or setting up Divine Shields on it next turn, but he's going to decide to just keep Wormrest Agent alive, which mm -hmm. I like this play a lot more. He's got the, no, uh, sorry, the Northshire Cleric in play that can start drawing him cards if that starts bumping in. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, he's going a little bit more all in, all in with it. He knows he has the second dragon once he's drawn the Deathwing for Twilight Guardian, so he can uh, expect to play that next turn. Doesn't need to save that shield to play with the Fiola. Well, I wonder if uh, Amaz is going to use Mulch. Oh, Amaz ends up drawing Illidan there. Um, he can play that card, but it seems a little bit out of place right now. Yeah, I mean, that 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 is quite a curve. That could have been a whew, turn one Wild Growth, turn two Fugin, turn three, or sorry, is it Stalag? I always mix them up. Um, Stalag is the one that always dies to Big Game Hunter. That's that's okay. the rule. Okay. Yeah, so that's Fugin. Fugin is the good one. Fugin is actually a great card. If Stalag was just a little bit less horrible than he actually is, I think I think this combo would see a lot of play in competitive Hearthstone. Uh, actually, Zixo won a tournament, no joke, with uh, with that in his Druid deck. He was running. Oh, uh... well, there you go. Yep. Yeah, but uh, I want to point out Mulch is in there, and Mulch is one of those cards where, for this specific challenge, you're thinking, all right, so I Mulch a Ragnaros. What does he get that's better than Ragnaros? Like, this is probably a net positive. Uh, unfortunately... Wait, he mulched a Velen's, didn't he? He, he mulched... He did get Velen. He mulched a... Oh, worm, my. ...a buffed Worm Resting. <laughs> okay. And got that's a not Velen. bad. I like that. Well, Velen's is one of the cards... I mean, it's just a huge, powerful, legendary minion, which is never what you want to mulch on. But um, in this format, it might actually I be difficult no for Kibler to actually play out all these threats. So maybe it's not as good as we, we, may, uh, we may think. I mean, for what it's worth, Mulch is one of the absolute best cards against Standard Dragon Priest as the Druid. You just need some way to get through the massive minions that Priest can develop. If they play a card like that Velen's chosen Kibler just drew, it's very tough for Druid to regain the board without removal like that. But on top of that, he's got the Sylvanas, which is also one of the hardest minions in the game as a Priest to deal with. Most of the time you're building a Priest deck, there's no room for anything like Iron Beak Owl. You need mm -hmm. to use your cards for solid minions and removal. So a card like that is just so incredibly effective. And I wouldn't be surprised to just see Kibler give up his uh, damaged Twilight Guardian here. I'm actually a little bit surprised that uh, Sylvanas made the cut. On one end, it's a very powerful minion. We know players are probably not going to be able to fit Silence in their decks because the, the remaining 15 slots outside of the raid bosses, which they must have, you know, are so limiting. And again, Sylvanas is actually not a raid boss, at least, at least as far as I understand uh, World of Warcraft. Um, but, uh, you know, Amaz thinks it's, it's powerful enough to play. My concern is I think a lot of players would just run as much, as much removal as they can possibly play. But um, silence removal, I guess, is pretty rare. 
uh, Nixia there in a Kibler's deck. Uh, obviously, Dragon, so uh, very, very, uh, I guess, tempting for Kibler to run, but uh, I almost wonder if Onyxia is counter to what you're wanting to do, which is play a bunch of big legendary minions, because Onyxia obviously fills up the board. Well, this is quite a fuel of light, man. I've lost to this combo quite a few times in ranked. Oh, yeah? Yeah, some people play that instead of Dark Cultist in their priest decks, and uh, it, it definitely wrecks you if you're a warrior. Okay, well, Amaz is not warrior, so he's just going to wrap a shield off for one, but this shield's going to keep coming back and buffs being drawn. Definitely, yeah. Well, luckily for Amaz, Kibler has played most of his buffs already. Two power word shields, one Bell is chosen. It's pretty safe from the Divine Shield aspect, but still, that's a massive minion, and Druid is definitely a class that has trouble with that. Yeah, we're probably about to see some uh, Light Bane on Light Bane crime, unfortunately. Well, I think it's the only only thing that's going to happen here. Uh, Kibler basically has the choice between healing and playing a Twilight Whelp or just playing down a Prophet Velen. And uh, I think Prophet Velen's probably a little better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you see this in competitive play a lot where players will just, e even if there's a play that is a little bit better on the board this turn, they'll almost always take the line of play that uses all of their mana. If you don't play Prophet Velen this turn, when do you really play it? You kind of have to get it out of your hand when you can. Mm -hmm. Especially in this format where there's no big game hunter, which is huge. That card becomes so powerful without the threat of big game hunter. It seems like Amaz has quite a decision here as well. He might have to trade his Fugan and Hero Power. Oh, it looks like he's actually pushing for some damage. This this seems pretty risky here. Velens is an extremely explosive card, and Kibler has spell damage on the board already. Oh, he draws a red black hand. That is that is the card that we uh, you really anticipated would, would be a game swinging card, and it absolutely is the best card in the game. In this you see, so. Kibler is actually just delighted to play that, and I, I want to go on the record that every single time I've been around Brian Kibler, at some point in hanging out, Brian Kibler reminds me how much he loves his golden red black hand that he actually just owns and runs on ladder. So. Uh, he had a look of just pure delight as he played it down and destroyed uh, Ildin Stormrage. Now, one thing we haven't talked about is the format here. The format is a little bit interesting. Um, in, in these preliminary matches, we're actually only playing best of three, but it is Conquest. So you really just have to win with any two decks. And, you know, it might be the case that Amaz's Druid deck just might not be uh, up to par, but he can lose this one, and he can win two with his other two decks. So uh, there's still quite a lot of play left here. Absolutely. I mean, it might even influence deck. Wow, look at that one. Divine Spirit, <laughs> Inner Fire off Nefarian. But is he facing down lethal? He is. Yeah. All right, Kibler's going to take it. Not quite good enough. Oh, man. Amaz was like one turn away. Yeah, Amaz, it felt to me like he gave the, uh, you know, okay, dragons are pretty good type of face back to Kibler's smile. You know, we had, we had some, some facial expression exchange there. Yeah, you don't, uh, you don't challenge the Dragon Master with a dragon. That's how you quickly lose the game. Well, I do believe Amaz is running a dragon mech of his own, is he not? So you might actually uh, challenge the Dragon Master with a dragon. But will it work? That's the will question. Work? Will dragons actually hurt Brian Kibler? I don't think so. So Amaz lost that one, but luckily for him, uh, that was Priest. It's out of the way now. It's Conquest format, so Kibler can't play that again. And I really mm -hmm. feel like that's just like, I mean, like you mentioned, Rob, it's got to be one of the strongest classes in this format. So uh, without the threat of that in the rest of the series, he can easily come back and win two in a row. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've really kind of agonized over this challenge. I've made tons of decks. I've, I've definitely scrutinized all the decks the players have made. And, and from what I've seen, and I think I've been wrong just about every time, that's the disclaimer, but from what I've seen, I, I, I feel like the Paladin decks really are the strongest in this format because whenever you have that situation where they have a big guy and you have a big guy, the action of giving a Divine Shield just gives you a free trade. And uh, it's, it's something people don't really think about because that situation is just never happens in constructed play. Um, and the, the strength of Paladin, you, you even have the board clears with equality. Yeah, you have uh, the answers of the Peacekeepers. And if you can ever just get to that stage in the game where each player is playing one big minion at a time, you're just going to win. So all you have to do is make it to that stage. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, even cards like Dragon Consort, all those support cards you just mentioned, you can fit those into a Dragon Shell mm -hmm. and still have a strong, proactive game plan of your own, so. Now, uh, Kibler has that same game plan. I mean, we talked about uh, Paladin being my favorite, at least, but both Amaz and Kibler are both running Paladins, so maybe we'll see some of that here in game number two. And we do. Oh, Kibler's got Paladin, Amaz has Priest, two of the strongest classes, most likely in this format. We, we haven't played too much, but you have Crypt. But, uh, yeah, it's a decent opening hand for Kibler. I like keeping the Shredder. You definitely want something to contest the early minions out of the Priest. Well, Double man. Peacekeeper seems like a strong opener, but it's, it's something you don't actually want to play in the early game. It's not, it's not a three drop, unless it has to be. 
That's a good point. I wonder, uh, did, did Kibler keep that or did he redraw it after? I mean, maybe maybe the card is just so powerful in this format that you want to be keeping it, you know? Uh, I think keeping it is is reasonable, but uh, you have to understand, like, generally in, in typical constructed Hearthstone decks these days, keeping a three drop is okay because you probably have a lot of one and twos in your deck, but it, this is not exactly the case. Oh, this challenge done with 10 raid bosses, it can get a little bit out of control. So Kibler here, Thanks. some people might be wondering, why did he make a minion well, and allow Moss to draw cards? Well, the reason Kibler did that is uh, for tempo's sake. Uh, he's basically expecting a Moss to have a three mana minion there, something like a Dark Cultist or maybe one of the Light Banes, and and, uh, you know, Amaz didn't have it, so it's actually worked out better for Amaz, but it's definitely not a bad play from Kibler to take that line of play. Well, here's one thing that Amaz does have. Because he's not playing dragons, he's playing a few more situational priest cards like mind oh, games. That's got to be good. Oh, that is good. Wow. And it's a 112. Wouldn't you know you read Brian Kibler's mind, and what's on Brian Kibler's mind? A dragon. So well, see, uh, it could have been better. It could have been a Ragnaros, right? Now it's just Mogushan Ward and Senior. <laughs> well, this is why you don't judge people for keeping Elder Peacekeeper in the opening. Okay. The turn you're four Deathwing. Because <laughs> you're expecting the turn four mind right. games into Deathwing. Right, you got to play around it. Oh, well. <laughs> Greetings. Uh, we, you know, he just saw the one Elder Peacekeeper too, so I'll be sad to see that second one just immediately show up and force Deathwing to follow the rules. Yeah, he does. He does still have two extremely high health minions, and now with a light bomb draw, that that still secures his position in the game. I feel. Absolutely. I mean, Kibler has. Wait, wait. He can Volge in his own Deathwing to regain that 12 health worth of high attack minion. That it would be a pretty cool play, but you might want to save that to deal with a you know powerful minion from Kibler as That's well. Right. Oh. I kind of feel like now that uh, Deathwing is basically on, uh, I guess one uh, health minion clearing duty. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to see like a counter, like what's his kill count <laughs> by the end of the game, like. You make a dude, Deathwing kills a dude. You make a dude, Deathwing kills a dude. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Um, often when you when you do Peacekeeper a, a high minion like that, instead of it taking out two guys, it, it takes out like six or seven just because it, it looks like such a non-threat, but it builds up uh, a fairly gradual but valuable tempo lead. Yeah. Now, uh, Deathwing, you know, Deathwing's not as strong as he used to be. It's not good times to be Deathwing, but you know he's doing what he can. He's still trying to help Amaz out. And... It's great in this format. Was no there ever a good time to be Deathwing? I mean, in World of Warcraft, you're just being hunted down the whole time. And... I think he took a nap for like three expansions, and nobody oh, okay. was hunting him. So Ooh. I think that I think was like a good time. The only time to be a Deathwing is when, like, on your way to being on the board by high fiving a Marmobot, right? That's that's about the only time. Yeah, to be or, a or mind games in this case. I guess so. Well, no, it wasn't a good time though. It, it walked him right into an Alder Peacekeeper. <laughs> It's just never a good time. Uh, I, I think Deathwing is just happy to, to be a part of things, you know? <laughs> He's just happy to be invited. Yeah. All right, well, Kibler really has to deal with this Illidan Storm Rage threat because uh, if, if he leaves it unchallenged, it's going to start spawning a crazy amount of 2-1. Uh, I think they're called Flames of Azanoth? Yeah, Flame of Azanoth. Okay, yeah, yeah. K Kibler also recognizes, though, you know, equality is one of his only spells in hand, really, his only spell. And if he plays it here, they're pretty inefficient trades that are being caused. And he's wondering, maybe if I leave this Illidan up for a turn, is equality and later in the game a better play? It would let him develop a big minion this turn, deal with both halves of Piloted Shredder. Uh, I don't mind this play. I actually like this a lot. That's going to set up a potential Thaddeus soon. He's got the combo down. Yeah, I think okay. this is strong. I think that's a reasonable line of play to go, uh, to go for Thaddeus. I mean, even if you don't win the game, it's just cool to see Thaddeus. What I really like from uh, Maz's list is he's, he's just not satisfied with 10 raid bosses. You know, he's like, 10 legendaries, really? I'm going to put Sylvanas in all my decks. I'm going to put Emperor Tharson in my priest deck. I want some of my opponent's legendaries. Let's Ooh. play some mind games. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a little greedy, but it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, why not? I like the strategy. <laughs> all right, well, that Illidan, only one health, but that is a big problem for Paladin. He's going to need a muster for battle or something soon, or a consecration. Let's see if Kibler can get that. And oh, he gets a cock hammer, which that's is fantastic. too bad. That's actually really good. You, I think you still would have to play quality though to, to just no, no, no. You just the board. You just cog hammer here. You take out the Illidan, take out the Emperor. Oh, I see. And uh, yeah, just develop a Shredder or Lothab, whatever, whatever feels right in your heart. All right, Shredder. Well, goes the Shredder. The coin is very valuable when you're playing such big minions because. 
the real problem with with a high mana cost minions in Hearthstone is you often need to do multiple actions in the same turn. So a card like Nefarian is really strong, but just because you can't play something else with Nefarian, it's a big problem. I think it's something that actually players noticed when uh, Scenarius took a little bit of a hit. I think Scenarius going from, going from eight to nine mana suddenly made him like unplayable in Druid decks for quite yeah. some time. There's just not many things you do with uh, one mana as a Druid, so yeah, and you can naturalize. Well, now you have the Living Roots, but uh, we didn't have yeah, that a year and a half ago, fortunately. Oh, uh, I want to no. point out here, Kibler had the option of playing Piloted Shredder, but he decided to use that coin, as valuable as it is, like you mentioned, and play a Lotheb instead. And the reason he did this is because right now he's winning on the board. That 7-4 is going to stop both minions from Amaz, and it has so much attack that Kibler's going to dictate what it trades into next turn. Mm -hmm. So he's made it so inefficient for Amaz to play a card like Shadow or Death, for example. He That's actually a really had the option play. to Vulgen and Lothab himself, actually. I thought that was a pretty clean option. But I guess Ragnaros has always been kind to Amaz, so I think that's that's just Amaz's secret weapon. Yeah, but I don't think there was a bad hit there. That was a great board for Ragnaros. Do you think but, even the face hit was acceptable? I mean, yeah. I, 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 in the six? It just can be hard to finish the game in, in this type of rule set, especially as a priest, I feel. You can always mind games into mm -hmm. Leroy or something, you know. Okay, I guess... Uh, I've seen crazier things in Chash, though. I good. guess that could be the case. Well, equality comes down. Um, Kibler's health is starting to get a little bit low, though, so... He gets the Thaddeus, though. Yeah. 11-11 eleven, eleven is on the board. Man, it feels like it's been like a year since I've seen that on the board. Actually, no, Tavern Brawl this week kind of did the trick, didn't it? I just want to point out, this Deathwing has had his attack made to one and his health made to one. He's looking at me as the saddest little Where's death Where's the silence? Around. It would be amazing right here. That silence would reset. The silence would be at 12-12 again. Yeah. That'd be such a such a good time to be Deathwing for a change. Oh. And he is! Oh, oh Deathwing's coming back! Sick. He's coming back in full power. Revenge of the Deathwing. Where's that consecration? <laughs> well, that would be good a little earlier. <laughs> Um, I feel like Ragnaros is really good here because Ragnaros actually triggers after the KT trigger. So um, hitting Deathwing with the Shredder and Ragnaros sniping the Deathwing is the only way you don't lose, unless the Shredder provides a taunt minion. Is that how that interaction works? I've never actually had it come up yes. before. Okay. Yes, it used to be the opposite, which made Ragnaros way worse than it should have been, and I believe the uh, guys over at Blizzard changed that around. Okay. Well, I am also not familiar with that interaction, so I might get to see it here, though. Yeah, I'm not really so. sure. Oh, I don't think Kibler, Kibler wants to, you know, he, he feels like he's really far behind this game. He doesn't want okay. to show any more cards in his Paladin deck because it's a deck he's probably going to play again. And I mean, so far, Priest is just dominating. Priest is 2-0 in the tournament. We've seen Kibler take a loss in with Paladin, and we've seen Amaz take his loss in with Druid. Now, keep in mind, guys, this is best of three, but they have three decks, so Amaz will have the option to play um, his Paladin or Druid, or Kibler can play his Mage or his Paladin, but it is match point. And, uh, you know, this, this is basically the semifinals. You got to get in that finals. And the finals will be best of five. You will have to win with every single deck. Here at the Hearthstone World Championship of uh, Challenge Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Big deal. A lot of pride, a lot of bragging rights. Uh, obviously, a lot of these guys see each other fairly often. So being able to see Amaz and just continually remind him, like, hey, I beat you. You lost. I'm the best. Uh, very important to play for that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think a lot of players uh, feel they are really good deck builders, but it's it's a skill that is left so unchallenged in a lot of ways in Hearthstone. It's 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 just easy to just you know use a deck that's really good and make it your own by changing a card or two. But you know having to work from the ground up is a skill that you you just don't see. And when you get to test it, uh, it's just so much fun to see how players approach it differently. No, it is a totally different skill set. And, you know, we've even seen in, you know, going back to the World Championship for a second, players who have been prolific deck builders who are used to kind of building their own stuff, they have a better understanding of the game overall. So totally agree with you, Chris. All right, well, players are on the same page here. Both players queuing in with Paladin for this match point here. Um, Amaz, I, I thought I actually dropped the muster, but that would have been strange. So uh, it just seemed like a... Seem like a keep there. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of Divine Shield granting cards from both players, so it seems like they agree with you, Crypt. That's a well really met. powerful mechanic in this. Now, format. it's it's less of a powerful mechanic when you don't have an actual minion to put Divine Shield on, which seems to be the problem for both players right now. Yeah. Well, well, that's the beauty of the Paladin Hero Power. It's going to give a constant stream of threats, but man, Muster for Battle, what a card. 
That is so important in Paladin Mirrors. Just that Lice Justice effect of being able to clear all of their hero powers for the rest of the game is so cool. Oh, no. Follow the rules. Oh, the rules have already been followed. That 1-1 one, one just becomes a 1-1. Uh, it one, one. was just like I wasn't doing anything. I was actually just already following the rules. Why are you yelling at me? All right, well, Amaz's inclusion of Seal of Champions really put, puts them in, in an extremely good position here. Uh, for Kibler to really have an impactful turn, he has to play the Cog Hammer, which feels so weak. Yeah, it's, it's definitely tough to recover from a point like this. He's going to opt to play two minions instead of just dropping the pile to Shredder. Not a bad play, and uh, we'll see. He needs his cock hammers, yeah, like you mentioned, to well, kind of stabilize him. The Kings works here. The Kings actually plays around a Consecrate that Kibler, I guess, might draw, because obviously he didn't have it after that. Um, but yeah, Kings on the 1-1 actually leaves you with a 5-3 uh, and a 4-1 on the board. And that's, that's a lot to deal with. Uh, you have to consider, like, these guys mm -hmm. are running as many as 10 big minions in their deck. Yeah, it doesn't leave a lot of room for spells or reactive cards that help you catch up from a losing position. But I mean, Paladin is one of the classes that does have those. There are Consecrations that work with Equalities if you draw them together. So even if Consecration isn't good on this specific turn, Kibler still li likely wants to draw it at some point because he is behind on board. And that's one of, one of the cards that can actually help you catch up. He's gonna just push a lot of damage. Whoa. That does surprise me. With uh, with as quickly as Kibler played the first follow the rules peacekeeper, it seemed like it might not be too uh, uncommon to see another one here. Really like a ooh. oh reporting for duty. Interesting. That's actually that's not a bad play. I think you would rather get the shield on that minion because even if the shield goes on the larger minion, you're gonna lose it to the weapon. So. In this case, essentially, Kibler is saying, I would rather lose my 1-1 one -one to the large minion of Amaz instead of my bigger minion. Now, the interesting point is, uh, Amaz, he obviously knows he's playing against a bunch of dragons. He probably knows he's playing against Ren Blackhand. Stacking a really big minion that isn't a legendary kind of removes that option. And we, we, we see Kibler actually has Ren, and he's not really going to be able to do much with it. I mean, it feels like this game is going to end without a legendary effect from Amaz's side. Yeah, how can we even be sure there's a legendary effect minion in there? I mean, it looks to me like a pretty standard aggro deck. Yeah, I lose to this all the time in rank. <laughs> I, I recognize certain key tells, like Monster for Battle and Blessing of Kings. Like, I've seen this deck before. This is not a challenge stone deck. There's just a card on turn six that I don't quite see in Amaz's hand that is all that is always, always, always in the hand of any person playing this deck on turn six. Grand I wonder, I wonder Crusader. What that, wonder what that card would oh, be. Grand Crusader. It's a yeah. mystery. Yeah, and I think that was that was what I was thinking about. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. Glad to help, Greg. Team player. <laughs> but seriously, though, uh, Kibler really has very few options here. It looks like he might just uh, end up going with the Shredder Hero Power, which is basically all he can do unless he decides he runs, really wants to give that uh, Shield and Minibot taunt. But... Yep, not too many options. He's going to be taking a lot of damage here, but I mean, luckily for Alan Moss, doesn't have. I am sorry. Too much burst, but is it enough? I don't think it quite is. All right. Actually, if he attacked the shield, he was dead. <laughs> right. So, Amaz is going to be able to get a pretty good trade here, put some more damage onto Kibler. But to be fair, Amaz had a very aggressive draw, and those qualities in his hand aren't exactly helping that. You know, that's a very that's a card you want to draw when you're behind on board, not when you're ahead most of the time. So I could still see Kibler winning potentially. No. I don't believe so. Like, how does he deal with that 8 4 Divine Shield? Well, that, that is the beefiest s Silver Hand recruit I've ever seen. You deal with it the hard way, man. It's uh, a cog hammer and a dream. <laughs> now, uh, okay. I don't know. And, uh, that recruit's still pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> so anything that deals one damage. Oh, is true legal. silver. That'll do it. It might, a taunt minion might come out of this That's one. True. It's about a one in 40 chance for a taunt minion. <laughs> well, Kibler's doing his magic trick with the hands, making that happen, and it does not. <laughs> All right, well, Lamaz does get that second point on the board, and in fact, it was exactly the case where he queued up with Druid. Maybe he actually overestimated the class, didn't have to play it, played his other two decks, and grabbed some wins against uh, a... Uh, former Challenge Stone champion, Kibler. Yeah, yeah Kibler just didn't have the uh, the actual moves to back up all that trash talk against Amaz. So. 
The trash talk game was on point, though, and that's really what matters. Oh, okay. so. uh, that's actually why we're all here, is just for the sweet, sweet trash talk between casters. What I'm really curious about is how the trash talking correlates with the results. I feel like it's usually inversely proportional. It's, uh, it's what we call justice. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, I guess justice has been served on our Hearthstone stage tonight in our, our opening Challenge Stone match. Um, we, we will get a, a few words from, uh, from our winner here. Rachel and Nimsh are on stage with Amaz, and uh, maybe he can give us some uh, insight to his successful deck building uh, strategy and mentality. Thank you so much, guys. I am here with Amaz, and Brian wanted to stay too, so we didn't have the heart to kick him out. <laughs> Amaz, uh, you know, when, when Brian built his decks, he built uh, like five of them and he built them really quickly and he really seemed to have a lot going for him here. What did you do deck building wise that allowed you to win over him? Well, um, I already knew kind of what three classes I'm going to focus. I don't build like nine decks and then sort of delete my bad ones because all of mine are really good. So, you know, you just have to, you know, tinker around to make them even better. You know, just a good use of time for deck building is a very good tip for Kibler for his future matches. Uh, I really like the Ragnaros play when he slammed Ragnaros and he came to and like um, got the Lothab. So is it um, a good old Amaz? Are we back? Yeah, I mean, people say that I'm real lucky in that, you know, um, getting all the Ragnaros snipes, perhaps mind games the biggest minion in the game is like real lucky, but then, you know, the challenge is sort of built that way, you know? It says, you know, Amaz, you can play mind games. So that's what, exactly what I did. Um, coming into this match versus Brian, did you have any specific raid bosses in mind? Any specific strategy to bring those cards exactly? Oh, uh, well, we didn't really know the matchups beforehand. So um, I just built the best decks. And um, unfortunately for my first round opponent, they don't get to play two matches. All right, nice. Well, Maz, strong words here. I want to know, uh, we asked you to taunt him before the match. Now I'm asking you, can you console Brian? Aw. Well, Kibler is a um, really good player. And, um, you know, maybe next time he'll have an easier opponent, you know? <laughs> maybe next time. All right, Nimsh, winner, I'm going to let you go. After a quick break, we'll be right back with the second half of our Challenge Stone semifinal. Don't go anywhere, anybody.